guys reviewing for sections 4.1 through 4.4 test that is coming up tomorrow. Uh, we are, yes, testing uh, in this class tomorrow. All right, so, so in the first uh, slide, I want you to do quickly, uh, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but I want the prime factorization of both of these numbers. Checking prime factorization, remember with upside down division, I must divide by a prime number. Uh, and you should have gotten 2 to the second power times 3 to the third power. On the second one, 2 to the third power times 5 times 7. Make sure you write your repeated factors as powers. Uh, some of you lost points on your quiz for that, so don't do that on your test tomorrow. All right, next slide. Um, I want to find the... Uh, GCF and the LCM of these two numbers. Use prime factorization, please. Prime factorization of both numbers. Now for GCF, I group the common factors. My GCF is 110. What's my rule for LCM? What's my last step? Very good. Multiply in the leftover numbers to get 660. Who got them both? Awesome, good job. Or we're on track to get them, maybe just didn't finish. Um, all right, now let's find GCF and LCM of three numbers. Let's see who remembers the rule that we discussed yesterday regarding grouping common factors when we have three or more numbers. Find the GCF and the LCM. Do the prime factorization of both numbers. And I list out my prime factors. It's clear that the only common factor that we see here is 5. However, with LCM, how many numbers does the factor have to be in to count as a group? Only 2. So there is one more group of 2s that counts towards LCM. So now in my LCM, I do 5 times 2, and then I bring in my leftovers times 2, times 3, times 5, and my LCM is 900. My LCM is 900. All right, do you see that now? So if on your test tomorrow when you're finding LCM, remember to go back and look for more groups where the factor is only present in two of the numbers that can also count as a group. All right, now switching over to monomials, I want you to find the GCF of these two monomials. All right, in the expanded form, we just break down the prime factorization. All right, now this is a lot. All right, I'll be the first to admit we group them, okay? And we have four, and then how many groups of S's? Three, Three how many groups of T's? Two, two, how many groups of U's? All right, now, in the, for the shortcut, what you can do for the variable part is you can look at each set of terms and you choose, so you look at your S's, which term ha is the, uh, has the smallest value of S's, it's S to the third, so that goes in your GCF. Then look at your T's, which one's the smallest, T squared, so that one goes in your GCF. Look at your U's, which one's the smallest, U squared, so that one goes in your GCF. Okay, so you can choose the smallest exponent value of the two variables. That one goes in GCF. The opposite is true for LCM. So for LCM, now I'm looking for the larger of the two variable uh, values for LCM. Prime factorization of the numbers, and then the larger of the two values uh, for the variable um, and that's how I find LCM. So go ahead and try this one. Okay, so I'm going to show you the long way first. We do the factorization. We group our common factors. Okay, but then the rule for LCM is we bring in our leftovers. To get 150 for the number part, I have three groups of D's and then two leftovers. So that's D to the fifth. And one group of E's and one leftover. So that's E squared. Now, the shorter... Uh, the shortcut here is that I choose the larger of the two exponent values for the variables, and then I don't have to show it all uh, expanded out for the variables. 
Okay, so 150 d to the fifth e squared. Anybody have a question about this? Anybody? Who got it right? Who got it right? Okay, good. That's encouraging. All right, so that's LCM of monomials. Now let's uh, switch gears. I believe we're simplifying uh, fractions next. Let's see, GCF LCM. Simplifying fractions, yes. Okay, simplify these two fractions. These fractions are separate from each other. They are totally independent. Uh, so simplify these two fractions. So when I reduce the number part, 15 over 49, what happens to my A's? What happens to my A's? They cancel each other out. There is no A. They cancel. What happens to my B's? 2B squared goes on top. What about my C's? What about my C's, guys? C squared goes on the bottom. Who got that right? Oh, yeah, 245. Okay, now on the next one, I reduce the numbers. Where do my leftover G's go? On the bottom. And my leftover H's go on top. Who got them both? Both. Both right. Okay, you have three of these on your test tomorrow. Remember, you're subtracting the exponent, and the leftovers go where the larger exponent is. All right, now you do have a review section on your test tomorrow. Um, these are concepts that are very important for you to remember in the long run. So that's why you're seeing them again on your test tomorrow. I want you to simplify these two expressions. You're not solving anything. You're just combining all the like terms where possible. So distribute a property in the first one, negative 2x minus 4. Did you get it? Then... Add 12, negative 2x plus 8. Got it? All right, now in the next one, I'm just combining my like terms. You can write it either way. Did you get it? All right, so basically what we did here is 15x minus x. There's an understood 1, so 15 minus 1 is 14. 10 minus 18 is negative 8. That negative sign is in front of the 18. So it's different signs, subtract and take. All right, now let's solve a couple equations. So for the equations, um, you are solving uh, for the variable. Tell me what the variable equals. Which variable would I move in the first one? Would I move negative 6a to the other side or 2a to the other side? I move negative 6a, and it goes back to that uh, rule that I don't want to have a negative attached to my variable. So I choose the lesser of the values. Negative 6a is, is a smaller value than 2a, so that's the one I'm going to move. Add 6a to both sides. Rewrite my equation. Now what do I do? Subtract 36. Divide by 8, 3. Okay. Then, in the second one, distribute a property. Now what do I do? Add 6 to both sides. Then what do I do? By negative 9 to get negative 14. Negative 14. Anybody get both? Both of them? Awesome. Good job, guys. All right. Last question that you're going to see on your test tomorrow, aside from the bonus. Uh, would be the inequality solving graph. Don't forget to graph it on a number line. Okay, what do you do first? You add 24 to both sides. Now you've got negative 12x is less than or equal to 72. What do you do to both sides? Divide by negative 12 and what happens to your inequality? You got to flip it because you divided by a negative to solve. You have to reverse your inequality. This only applies to multiplication and division when I have to multiply or divide by a negative. Now, is there an open or a closed dot on negative 6? Closed dot. Did your numbers trend in the right direction? The farther left, the bigger the negative? Closed dot. Arrow goes right or left? To the right. 
Okay. Uh, if you understand that, guys, that's everything you need to know for your test on 4.1 through 4.4.